The next 10 minutes of this video are gonna be so important to listen to because it's a very strategic time on YouTube right now. And I have some tips for you right up front, but this is the Coffee with Candle show. So we have two guests today. We're gonna be doing some Q and A and coaching. Check out time codes and chapters to skip around in it. We're gonna be doing Q and A, coaching with two individuals, answering your questions, talking about YouTube strategy, getting ready for 2024. How can we get views? How can we get subscribers? But right off the top, and uh, I want to mention today's episode is brought to you by thinkmediasale.com. More on that later, as well as vidiq.com forward slash think. More on that later. But right off the top, it's a strategic time. Happy December 1st. I hope your November went good. Happy Thanksgiving, wherever you are in the world, whatever you celebrate, it's a great time to be grateful. But I want to encourage you, this is such a strategic time on YouTube right now. And there's a major temptation and pull right now. A lot of people, probably 95%, actually start to kind of check out. I mean, it's December, it's holiday parties, it's been a crazy year, there's so much drama in the world and everything that's happening. Man, I just kind of want to hide away, maybe rewatch The Office, maybe get a little bit of Ben and Jerry's, maybe just kind of watch Elf and jump on Disney Plus and go through the Christmas movie rabbit hole. All of that's cool. But there's such an opportunity right now to really go all in on YouTube. And one of the things to understand about YouTube is the seasons and the times and the rhythms as it pertains to views and really as it pertains to money to be made on the platform. So let me illustrate it this way. November, December, and January, so really the next 60 days, are the most profitable times to be on YouTube, and I can prove it to you. So let me take you behind the scenes and share with you um, the analytics from our channel, Think Media, and share how much money that we make. Now, of course, this is all relative and we have you know a larger channel, but I wanna share with you how much money we earned last year and talk about how strategic right now is. Okay, so if we go to how much money we earned on my channel, Think Media, okay. And what we're looking at too is less about the dollar amount, but let's go back and what we could see is actually January of last year, and December of last year. And then I think we scroll down, we got June, January, December. Here's here's my point. Look over on the far right side. And actually this is kind of good to know. I was reviewing this with some of our team and sometimes we don't dive deep into our analytics, but what we can look at is not only do you go to your analytics, you go to revenue, but then you wanna go to the, how much you're earning, see more. And now you're in advanced analytics. And what you're gonna be comparing here is you have the opportunity to not just see what your estimated revenue was, um, but you also get to see your CPM. And your CPM, again, is the amount of money advertisers are willing to pay for um, on your videos. Now, CPMs vary. And so this is gonna be different if you have you know, viral re-uploads of TikToks and cat videos versus personal finance versus uh, DIY videos, they vary. But what happens in November, December, and January is advertisers' ad spend goes up, which means your revenue go your revenue goes up if your ch channel is monetized. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that strategically, the more content you can post and the more views you could get, the more money you can make. And in a way, not because you're doing anything different, but because the environment is different. It's the season where CPMs are higher. And so what I can actually see here is that in January and December, we're at 2179 and 2183. Uh, November was 2236. And so that was some peaks, if you will. And then, uh, I mean, it all kind of hovers throughout the year around there, at least for us, this is our, our experience. But then if I look at my ad revenue now, January last year, 50 grand. Uh, that was, I think, the peak of the year, lowest being like 32. And there's the other reason of it's not just your CPM and your RPM, which let me know what yours is. You could drop it in the comments. Have you noticed it's different? Or maybe your experience is different. As it, does it actually go down right now? I'm not sure. But as a rule, advertisers, they're trying to do all their holiday sales. They're getting their messaging out there. Okay. The other thing that's happening is there's strategic times a year, depending on your type of content. People are hanging out at home more. They're maybe watching it more. Like what we've noticed is not just November and December is holiday shopping. And we talk about tech. And so this is a very strategic time to do camera reviews or really, or video reviews. We do camera reviews. It's a strategic time to do like product reviews. What product could you review in the next couple of weeks? 
What product comparison could you review in the next couple of weeks? What video could you do that's a tutorial about a product in the next couple of weeks connected to affiliate marketing, right? Strategic time. But the other thing is you just want to think about psychology and mindset. So what happens for us in, in January is everyone's like, okay, new year, new me. It's time to start my channel. It's time to get focused on my channel. It's time to spend my gift card and buy that camera on Amazon because I'm going to do YouTube this year. And so the spike is also just based on January has a lot of momentum because of people's mindset. And what's so important for us is to think strategically about our entire year. Like you want to be hustling when, when people are paying attention, but there's other times when people are maybe more checked out, call it summer. So rhythms for different channels can be different, but my challenge to you, wishing you a happy December 1st, 2023, is how can you make strategic videos right now that position you to maximize December, but also to prepare for January? And I'm not saying like you shouldn't be definitely resting and recovering and family. That's one of our biggest values. Family is everything. But we're plan the, the people who have the best results, they don't start planning and New Year's resolutions on January 1st. They start planning December 1st, if not earlier. They're more strategic a month ahead, two months ahead of everybody else. And 99% of people are like, oh, I'm just going to check out until next year, man. Now I'll maybe get serious on January 1st. Don't get serious on January 1st. Get serious right now. So let me know, what are some of your goals? What are you focusing on? Where are you watching from? Uh, what are you up to as far as this month? What videos are you going to post this month? And did that bring any aha moments? Maybe let me know. Is there a video that you could make or review? Because now's a time when a lot of people are shopping. You know, one of our favorite product review videos, final tip, is called the Versus video. And you don't have to be a tech channel to... Uh, to do a versus video, let me actually give you kind of a cool idea here. Like uh, I've been drinking these electrolytes. You ever heard of limit electrolytes? They're full of salt. I'm probably going to die. And so LM, uh, element electrolytes, but watch this element electrolytes versus liquid IV element electrolytes versus relight. Maybe go element versus relight. Cause I heard about this relight one which also doesn't have a thousand milligrams of sodium. It only has 700 or 600. So element versus relight. Here you go. We got a video right up here two years ago, 5k views, keto drink comparison to me. I mean, it's, uh, it's only a one minute video could probably be a little bit longer. Look at Nestia. You've got 47,000 views worth the hype. This guy's got 22,000 views. That's almost, that's double his subscribers. Why? Well, People don't know this creator yet. They know they're searching for a review of this electrolyte powder. You know, you can go to Amazon and get an Amazon link for that powder. I wonder if you can go to Element's website themselves and if they have an affiliate program. I haven't checked. Let's go look. And so we got, uh, we look top, type in Element, LMNT affiliate, uh, click the link. And this is a, let's see if we get, is this the partner program? It says partner program right here. So, uh, partners.drinklmnt.com. I don't know why I call it LMNT. It's element apply to be a wholesale partner. Okay. So here's a partner. I don't know if, if we would be, oh, that's wholesale. So, okay. Maybe you can't be an affiliate here. You can be an affiliate on Amazon, maybe another website. And that's just me spontaneously thinking about like, if you had a health channel or something that there's some strategic videos you could do. And one of my favorites is the versus video comparing two products. People are searching this month. And what are they going to do in January? Oh man, I got to get my hydration right. I got to get my energy right. I'm going to get my vitamins right. I'm going to get my workout program. I'm going to get my fashion right. I'm going to get my YouTube channel right. What's the mindset? I hope this is helpful for you to be a little bit more strategic as you prepare for next year. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to bring our guests into the waiting room. We could do that. Uh, if we are not, I want to welcome you to the Coffee with Candle show. What are you drinking? Where are you watching from? I've got uh, as I would, I don't know what this is. It's some black and white Ethiopia Yerga chef coffee. Just brewed my second cup. That's made. And I, do I need it? I, I showed up to the stream a little bit fired up, but uh, we're going to get crushing here. Jason and Alex are going to be on in just a bit. But as you know, smash the like button because this is the coffee with candle show.
Welcome back to Coffee with Cannell. My name is Sean Cannell, Rhymes with YouTube channel. This is the show where I answer your questions, where we do live coaching with YouTube creators and entrepreneurs, giving strategies that you can apply as you observe other people getting coached and where we also let you know about cool stuff that is happening. Today's video is brought to you by vidIQ.com forward slash think. You can grab a 30-day trial of vidIQ's boost plan for just a dollar. And one of the coolest things about the boost plan, let's uh, let's put it to the test here, is uh, the AI coach. And the AI coach is really chat GPT integrated with a YouTube mindset, integrated with your channel. So you, you give vidIQ permission to look at your analytics, look at your data. And so what's kind of interesting is you could just click, you know, Based on my channel, what video ideas do you have for me? It's one of my favorites. Because again, it's based on my channel. Well, why don't I just use ChatGPT? Because vidIQ is better. Because it's empowered by ChatGPT as they're um, you know, plugged into it, but with data from your channel and then the overlay of making an assistant. You know, Kind of like you can, you can have prompts and filters and programming around ChatGPT so you don't have to be a programmer and all technical. You could just grab vidIQ and even try it out for just $1. So there's really no risk there. But here's what's kind of cool is based on Think Media, it just gave me five ideas and common mistake series, a microphone reviews and comparisons. Those are all pretty good. But I'm also curious uh, if we said what strategic video ideas should I make this month that would earn the most money? When we start thinking about prompts, when it comes to AI, I don't know what the answer to the question is going to be, but let's see. Based on the data of your channel, um, it's maybe going to tell me the same. Oh, a YouTube growth case study from scratch. One year update. No one's been doing those productivity tips. Great productivity tips. Of course, everyone's thinking productive in January. That's pretty good. And uh, it looks like it actually just spit out the same thing. But anyway, so you can uh, ultimately check out vidIQ. Give it a try for yourself. Click around. Try the different prompts. Uh, explore them. And that is just the tip of the iceberg. You have some keyword research. We were talking about uh, Element Electrolytes earlier. And so you can actually see that, okay, that's a 1,500 people a month, 2,500 maybe Element Review, 3,000 a month. And verify that, okay, that would be a cool... Like that's not a viral video. It's a practical search-based video of somebody that's maybe trying to make a buying decision after they, you know, hear your review about it. So it could be a profitable video. You don't have to have a product review channel to do product reviews. If that was relevant for your niche and your brand and just happens to be the electrolytes I'm drinking lately, um, then you could do that as well. And again, it sounds like they don't have an affiliate pro uh, program. Victoria, who is uh, one of our Think Media team members, uh, loves Element, and she's like a fitness nutrition expert uh, in her own right. She said they have like a referral program and you could get free boxes if you went directly through them. But then also there's other sites that sell them and, and you could just say, hey, check them out on Amazon or the, you could give them both options. You put both links in your description. There's a couple of different ways to buy. You can buy direct if you like Amazon because it's Amazon Prime. Boom, links in the description down below. So anyways, vidIQ is a powerful tool to help you get insights, to help you with their AI coach and all of the above. And so check it out at vidIQ.com forward slash think. There's no risk. Make December your best month by just investing $1 to try it out, get better results, even if you cancel. Because what's kind of cool, right, is... We talked earlier about this being a strategic month. I don't know how to get this off the screen. Um, there we go. It's been a minute since I've live streamed. It's been a long week. I just got down shooting 400 videos in seven. Th I did like a thumbnail batch. I batch thumbnails once a year. Um, and I told Kyle as we were batching thumbnails and Melissa, I was like, I want to do three years, assuming I don't change my hair too much or like shave my beard of thumbnails. I was sort of joking. But when you take batching to the extreme, I'm like, I want to shoot. And so there's like a couple hundred photos, but I'm like, I don't want to actually like, you know, take a shower again. I just want to do it the one day I'm with other people. Otherwise, I'm just at home with my family and my kids. They don't care. My wife doesn't care. It's not true. Okay, relax. So we're going to welcome Alex on. And I'm excited because Alex is going to be sharing with us some of his analytics. And so Alex, break down. Uh, thanks for coming on. Tell us a little bit about your channel and um, what you're up to. Well, um, the channel, <clears throat> hi, Sean. Thanks for having me on. Um, the channel in and of itself is all about exterior sheet metal. 
So, you know, breaking that down a little bit more, we're doing tutorials on metal roofing. We're doing tutorials on uh, window trims, anything exterior, siding, anything like that. And, you know, in terms of audience, who I'm trying to target would be the, the DIY uh, enthusiast, I would say. Uh, the professional too. I think we can go two routes on this channel, but um, yeah, that's that's really the kind of in a nutshell uh, explanation of the channel. So awesome! Um, yeah, I yeah, love it. And thanks so much for being a part of our community. We're pulling up Alex's analytics right here. So now we're looking at November, kind of a fun time to review. Almost five hundred dollars ad revenue. Ad revenue is usually three days delayed. So um, we won't really know about November revenue ex fully until probably December 3rd. Um, but looking good. Go for green. We got the green arrows up, watch time up, subscribers consistent. I know we all want to grow faster, but gr go for green is the ethic. Like if we can have steady progress forward, that's something to celebrate. Uh, let's check out real time views. Say, see more on the right side there real-time views um see more under there we go and then what i love about this page is publish date so if you scroll down a little bit publish date when i see that 2022 short that gets me excited because literally a year ago you have a video still getting views and we have our program video ranking academy right that's the dream 2021 still getting views and the, how can we repeat that as much as possible, especially in a niche like yours? It's not going to be super viral oftentimes, right? Because it's it's so specific. But what happens when you have hundreds of videos that are a year old, two years old, and you got a couple that were on screen right now, still growing your channel, that's really cool and really encouraging. And so your real-time views are looking great. We can X out of there. And let me know any specific questions. We'd love to look through what you're looking at here or any spe specific questions you have about analytics. The, um, the main um, question on my mind when it comes to analytics, I would love to get into your mind in terms of, okay, I know how, not how often do you check your analytics? Because I know we're probably all really, we're doing that at an, at an unhealthy rate. Yeah, daily, multiple <laughs> I, times a day. <laughs> I know I do. First thing I do when I wake up, it's not good, but that's what I do. Uh, but what, when you hop into the desktop analytics, uh, mobile version is a little different, but the you know when you hop in here, where are you going first? What are you looking at in terms of, I mean, uh, other than subscri other than, yeah. other than subscriber count? I you got you. I mean, what? How, yeah, let's how go for it. So, so first go up to November. Let's go last 90 days. So okay. uh, I like to go last 90 days and then let's scroll down and look at the top 10 videos in the last 90 days. So it's one thing for us to say success leaves clues, make part twos, but it's another thing to define what that means. What do we actually, how do we spot the videos that are being successful? Shorts are doing very well for you in terms of views. Mm -hmm. um, those seem to be your big winners. That 2021 video is obviously always uh, a legendary video. Have you tried to double down on that how to install one? Have you done that a couple times since then? I'm, I mean, the uh, the how-to stuff really, uh, it always performs well. This, um, this is an outlier video, this blind review here that's sitting at 100. That's like, that's the big pop-off video. That, Can you uh, do affiliate marketing to this stuff or are you already? Yeah. Is that possible? Yeah. So Does that it, tool you see in the thumbnail is uh is has an affiliate link to it what Pro website does the affiliate link have you made money there amazon yeah oh cool yeah it's it's, it's brought in i think we're I'm sitting at around a hundred bucks a month from amazon right now sick uh it's probably due in part to this video right here uh but well, listen to this. this so one when i one tactic so let's get super tactical right now so I see that, I hear that, I think about, okay, what is on brand for you? Staying on brand for your channel, maybe broadening a little. If you've heard my dartboard analogy, it's like, you don't wanna post a video that's, if you're playing darts with some friends, you don't wanna post a video that's like way off the board, like your friend was drinking too much and like, it's like, bro, like you didn't even hit the dartboard. But bullseye would be yeah. like, it would be like a 
architectural sheet metal is in the title. It's exactly on the dartboard, even on the edges might be something related to like a tool or just a tool comparison video. Like, I don't know why mm -hmm. it might not even be exactly about architectural sh sheet metal. And what's interesting about that is at least getting that a hundred bucks up a month from Amazon. It's exactly what we just said. Maybe, maybe someone's shopping for um, doing more DIY projects in December. They're looking for certain tools. What's the best, this tool, what's the best, that tool, what's this versus that tool. And this could be stuff you already of course have in your shop, in your garage, and you could do verses and you're already understanding VRA and you could, they also don't have to even be hard to do. And that is a content format that could add value to your audience, keep it on the dartboard, but also pump up those affiliates. And with some of your ranked videos and whatnot, if we're at 500 a month on ad rev and we get to 500 a month on Amazon affiliates, that's not that far off. And also that that's a general strategy. But if you notice there, just looking at your top 10, I'm like, okay, based on your unique channel, that is a very specific thing that would be aligned with what you're doing if you kind of just keep it all on brand. Does that make sense? Yeah. So this is, this is a tool review, but it's like, it's my first glimpse at it. Like we're looking at it together first time. Mm -hmm. Right. So it, it hit well. I had, it, there was some people say, telling me that before the video played, Amazon had an ad for this tool before this video played. That and makes sense. I'm think maybe maybe that was. Uh, but that was that would that would cut you out. That would cut you out from affiliate. You would just get paid ad revenue if they click through on the ad. Gotcha. Yeah, because they wouldn't be clicking your affiliate link that's in the description. By the way, can we open up that video if you and and if not? Oh yeah, just click on it. Hit me with uh, the the pen right above analytics. By the way, look at cool to see the banger too. Fifteen hundred dollar video that that paid you. Uh, well, this, this I hope it encourages. This was an exciting time right here. Yeah, <laughs> I'll tell you that little that little bump up. That That's so rad, exciting. but it's still going. That thing is, and when we mm -hmm. we have what's called the rocket R in our seven R's. That's what we mean by rocket. Like this is some SpaceX stuff. Psh, video <laughs> flying. Let's go. Yeah. Um, okay, so if we go to the pen. Mm -hmm. And I want to really affirm you, if you're interested in getting this tool, hit this link. Great job at having it right at the top, link to the tool, great use of Genius Links, well, well done. And so um, awesome to see you just executing like VRA principles, uh, you know, very sharply. Do you have a pinned comment with the affiliate link as well? I think so. Okay, don't, where... don't leave just in case, because I don't know if yeah, we're yeah. just sharing your Chrome window, but that's that would be it the is, other yeah. tip. All right, let's head back over to analytics and then hit um, content. Oh, here it is, content. All right, if we scroll down. Yeah, shorts do well. Uh, uh, top shorts, great. Okay, shorts, traffic sources. Yeah, shorts feed is big source of traffic, great. Hit um, mm -hmm. audience. Scroll down. How much time have you spent in channels your audience watches? Uh, a, a little. I see some of my competitors, but what what I have learned from what my audience watches is the quote unquote the niche that I'm in, without really uh, or like the the niche that I think I'm in versus the niche that I'm in mm -hmm. is is directly correlated to what my audience is watching. And yes, some of these. Uh, Sorry, some of these channels are metal roofing channels, but you see, you got tool review zone. You got, yeah. you know what I mean? Like you Smart got though, I mean, tool review got, zone. We are, we talk about it in our niche finder course. We talk about, you know, it's it, like, if you want this to be a business, it's smart to have positioning. Not that you got to change things around, but it's a, it's a logical place where there's a lot of commerce taking place that you could profit from. Um, I think some homework would be to take some time to to go through competitors. Um, you're specifically wanting to go to their popular videos and see what kind of topics are, po are, are most viewed. See what kind of thumbnails or title formats. Because sometimes it's not even that you're going to copy the topic because it's maybe not exactly right for your channel. But if it was like this weird two by four trick 
fixed da 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 and you're like oh this weird sheet metal trick so you just cut you use it kind of as like oh wow that's a cool idea it's been verified in its effectiveness in my niche macro niche of more you know kind of construction you know, and i could adapt that so there's a lot of insight that could come from there um and then what your audience watches, scroll down a little bit where we can look at the videos. So then we got maybe some different shorts and we can see final nail in the coffin, my crew changing the leaky laundry box. So even watching some of those shorts, what do they have? What, what did they do it? How did it start? Um, and then you could skip through those three pages, a lot of shorts, all shorts. Yeah. Install it's, metal it's roofing, crazy. professional yeah. masonry. Yep. Okay. Interesting. So, so sorry, you're saying this is a great place for future content uh, strategy. Uh, oh yeah. Those two is, and because you're also, you're understanding the psychology of your audience by saying, okay, what else are they watching? What types of videos or types of formats even? Because again, you might see like the guy literally just walked into the room and said two things and he was holding up his phone. I could do that tomorrow on the job or on the, you know, like it, you're like, okay. And so there's a lot of gold and it's going to be, of course, there's a lot we could learn from Mr. Beast, but it's different. So you want to be really, the creator who understands their audience, their community, the psychology and the mindset of the type. Um, I also find it fascinating how diverse what time viewers watch content can be. Your, when viewers watch videos on YouTube is entirely different than, than ours. Mm -hmm. Ours is five, it kind of starts at 5 a.m. It kind of peaks at seven. Look at weekdays. It's when people get off work. Do you oh. upload at those times? And that's when, so I experiment with shorts uploads just to see who's on, right? And um, they always perform better at, like, I'm usually posting four or five o'clock just to, huh. you know, for it to be there at the six and seven o'clock point. And they are, depending on the short, like I'm using Opus Clip. It's chopping up everything from my long form content. I rarely upload an original short. It's all repurposed from Opus. And they they perform well. They bring awareness to my long form content. Like when you go to the traffic source for related videos, it's in there. And it's working, right? It's it's leading them to the long form content. Not like we're not getting thousands of views from related shorts, but they click on it. Right. They yeah, know where the we're seeing is. the same. That related shorts is a great point. And we're also seeing an interesting thing, kind of a side tip. But like we had this secret video that we did for our tech guide and we did an unlisted video yeah. that t was titled click here for a secret video. And then we put that on related shorts area. Now, for all we did for us, and this is still actually active for uh, anybody watching, if you go to think tech thinkgearguide.com we've got all the answers to the biggest tech cameras uh, lenses lighting faqs we just wanted to bring awareness to that but you can't do clickable links in shorts so what we did was a clickable link to a video of me being like thanks for finding this secret video if you haven't heard we're doing a giveaway of a youtube studio um we have we've updated all of our answers the entire thick media team put their collective genius together what's the best camera right now the best lighting the best budget gear and then give a verbal call to action to that and also put a link in the description. Is there anything outside of YouTube you're trying to do to monetize or a website or anything you're trying to promote? Yeah, I do. I have a website with courses available through Wix that, and then, but I'm also building an email list with that has no current purpose right now, other than just collecting names and emails. And that's just hitting over a thousand. Well done. So um, there is a capture there. It's just there's no uh, client journey for them. That's yet. a whole separate conversation that you'd want to get yeah. dialed because that's so important. But imagine if you made a video that was unlisted and that you said click here for uh, our secret group, our secret video. And then all you said, you're like, hey, um, you know, Alex here. If you haven't heard, and this is the, the, the key is like, if you haven't heard, I actually have an insider's newsletter and on this newsletter, you're going to get this benefit and this benefit and this benefit. I send out one email a week, just go to da, 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 URL or click the link in the description and all the growth on the shorts, whatever people click related videos, find the secret video, secret video gives call to action to email list. Do that over two years. Your 1000 email list signups are now 10,000, 20,000 people.
Yeah, sure. And you know, you can also monitor the performance of that unlisted video. Can you not? Oh, totally. Yeah. So we, ours has like 2000 views and like 200 likes and tons of comments. People are like, Oh my gosh, secret video. Cause yeah. it's kind of a, so just, I, I think that it's really cool to think outside of the box of how we could use the related video feature. Um, Okay, so there's so much we could cover. I will, oh, let's t- spend a little more time. I want to get to Jason. And we also, if you mm-hmm. got a question and you're watching Coffee with Cannell, put four question marks before and after it. Let's go to revenue, though. Scroll down a little. Okay, RPM 1099. That's higher than think. Great job. Which is cool as shorts are and don't stop. That's why long form is the GOAT, the greatest of all time. Because if you up your long form views, yeah, shorts 31 cents. That's also high too. Usually for us, like four to six, but 31 cents. So your RPM is high in period, but 31 cents awesome. is nothing compared to $10, right? Not right, dude, that's, that's, is that in, cause my program or my settings are in Canadian. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Good. Fair enough. Yeah. So, so it's then like probably, probably in kind US. of like close to par, but it would also speak that your niche is a higher RPM because ours is tech is. And so that always inspires me to do long form, but then do the see more thing we did earlier on the revenue of your last couple months on the, the left there. Yeah. How much are you earning? And so this is interesting to me. And again, what we're looking at, I should go into dark mode um, is playback CPM on the right side there and how it varies per month. Again, there's not a lot you could change here, but I would say this. Here are some principles. The student of YouTube analytics is looking for patterns, rhythms, seasons, looking for data sets. And the more you look at this different, these data sets, the more you might say, like, if I looked at this, if I just wanted to make one conclusion, if you looked at your playback CPM there, I would, mm-hmm. I would go on vacation in March because the CPM is uh, lowest then. I'm not trying to come to that conclusion, exactly. but that would be a conclusion. Like, sure. And I would look at it. I, yeah. I'd go and may, maybe go, I'd go on vacation in January. And, and so that, that actually contradicts my experience with what I just said, but you got to know your own rhythms. This is a big unlock because what we're um, talking about with like our think media team is I'm kind of like, listen, the, like those are our team members that work. We're, we're trying to build a world class culture. So, and and we value family and we value hard work. So, our team gets six weeks off a year. That's what we've been working towards Sabbath week, two weeks of paid vacation, other extra four day weekends and stuff when we really hustle. Great. Saying that, I'm like, of course, we're going to take things to give me off, but we're hustling on Friday. That is, that's, that's the Super Bowl for us. It's Black Friday. We're a tech channel. It might not be relevant for every channel, but it's relevant for us. And and it's kind of a mindset shift because I just looked, showed you our analytics at the beginning of this whole stream, right? November, December, and January is a whole nother level of push. So I try to like encourage, and this would be for the individual creator, right? You're actually just talking to yourself and talking to your family. You're getting by like, hey, honey. And that's kind of, you know, if you think about it, it's like Sonia, my wife, um, we're, we're, we are actually established too. We have total, you know, financial freedom, but it's like, babe, you know, not only for the financial aspect, for the fact that our community is shopping right now, it's why we do thinkgearguide.com, right? They're shopping right now. So we want to be there to answer their questions. This is, I would, t- you could call it responsibility. It's our responsibility to be showing up when people are looking for answers. The flip side, there's different seasons. So I'm like, we can make up the time. Other, If the team is like, hey, can I take a little more of a break here? Or it's, you know, summer, like February, like whatever the rhythm. It's like, yeah, no big deal. Hey, can I take off Black Friday? No. Like you, I mean, there's a few people that are, yeah, like it's, there's different like roles here, but you get what I mean. It's When it's time to show up, we got to show up. And so the more you study the rhythms of your channel, that's encouraging. And it's also encouraging too, because sometimes we get too stuck in our emotions uh, in in the terms of there are ebbs and flows throughout a year. It's not just consistent. Different channels have differences in December, January, and sometimes it's back to school is going to be crazy for somebody. Summer might be way up for a travel channel and it might be down for something else. And so those are some of patterns, data sets, rhythms, seasons, observations. And then as you just continue to absorb that data, 
apply it to maybe your content calendar, your schedule, how you communicate with your family. I think some of those tips could be helpful. Yeah, very helpful. Thank you, Sean. I appreciate your time, my friend. Alex, I appreciate you. Was this a cool conversation? Do you have some thoughts to implement? Well, I, uh, in terms of like timing, seasonality, and uh, I, it just I, ideas start flowing when you start talking to me about that because I, there's there's certain uh, products that come into play at certain times for metal roofing, for example, right? So I could you know plan content around that. Right now, I'm in I'm knee deep in a five part series on how to install standing seam. It's you know it's probably not maybe someone's trying to wrap up their their uh, their project before the winter comes right so it's just and that that, that other one that one hundred and seventy thousand viewed video it was the least edited one I had but I think the timing had everything to do with it because this tool hit Amazon and people were just going silly about it right so it's really I mean it's a I'm in an experimental phase big time right now but. I love that. Well, I appreciate you, Alex. Thanks so much for being a part of our community. Grateful for you and uh, great job. It's cool to see. I mean, you got money coming in, growth on the channel, uh, momentum. You're already doing great. So we're going from good to great. That's our actually theme for 2024 at Think Media. Let's build. Let's go. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, got you got it. Take care. All right. What was your aha moment smash like? Um, and uh drop a comment i'm here live we got jason coming on in a second if you have a question put four question marks before and after your question today is also brought to you by thinkmediasale.com if you haven't seen our cyber week sale you're going to want to get it before the price goes up you could get five courses for 57 dollars. so if you're thinking about starting or growing a youtube channel in 2024 this is the complete package for growing a successful YouTube channel. Uh, you can get Niche Finder, our starter kit, a ticket to our YouTube roadmap, uh, roadmap workshop that's happening in January next year, YouTube Shorts Masterclass and AI. This is a crazy price. You get all five of these courses for the low price of $57. If you go to thinkmediasale.com, you can see all the details. If you're not serious about YouTube or you're just kind of hanging out, um, you know, learning a little bit from us and whatnot, great. Stick around for our free content. But Think about all the different ways you could spend 57. I don't know, you know, some dinner out, a couple extra appetizers. It's like the price of two appetizers. Sean, where do you get your appetizers at? Those are some expensive appetizers. I don't know, but thinkmediasale.com. So uh, check that out. And then we got a question coming in here before we get to Jason. Uh, what are your thoughts on using your personal name versus a brand name? I've got three thoughts for you. Number one, it's a really good question. People wonder, how do I name my YouTube channel? Three options. First and last name, name plus brand or brand name only. So first and last name, your channel could be Sean Cannell, Tony Robbins, Shalene Johnson, Gary Vaynerchuk, Alex Hermosi. First and last name. So personal brand. Great. Second idea. Your channel could be Cooking with Karen, Barbecue with Bob, cooler if it rhymes. Kind of cool because you get what you're doing, or it also might not make as much sense. It might be like The Future with Fred. Like, what is a technology channel? I'm not sure what that is. So I love that because you might even cut your last name off and put more of the niche or the brand or something about it. Like, Real estate tips with Ralph. And if you were for some reason named by your parents with a name that doesn't rhyme with your niche, I'm sorry. That's me too. YouTube tips with Yusuf. My name should have been Yusuf, but my name is Sean. But my Sean Cannell rhymes with YouTube channel though. So, okay. And then lastly, think media. Um, Other ones, you know, like a brand name. Like, so... Uh, it, you could just name your channel, you know, film riot, you know, and I, and it's up to you. So here's the questions when it comes to deciding is what is it you're ultimately trying to build? What is your long-term vision? 
Uh, if you get into gaming, it's sometimes, you know, it might be like Razer 55X22 or, you know, different gamers, kind of different culture. So kind of understanding, you know, what is it you want to communicate? What it, what is your what is your dream? What is you what do you want to build? And I don't know if you can actually get it wrong, although I do think if you get it right, it's incredibly helpful. Like, again, if you could go cooking with Karen, it's like, oh, cool. I know her name's Karen. And then I obviously know what the channel is about. It's about cooking. So I think those are a few thoughts. At the end of the day, um, one other tip I would give you is if you think like a business owner and not just like a hobbyist creator, which is our goal at our company, is no whether you're kind of on the creator path, you just want to be pure creator economy, even with an entertainment channel, or you already are a business minded person because you're a service provider or a business owner. All of us need to be thinking like business owners. Like Jay-Z said, I'm not a businessman. I am a business man. And a business person would also say, is the website available? Is the social media handles available? Is the trademark available? Where's the, where do I want to build over the next five to 10 years? Now, you don't have to answer all those questions because you might be like, relax, bro. I just want to name myself like Razor 55 Kick Cat. You know, like, okay. You know, I don't ever want to have a website. Well, that'd be your vision then. But if you, if you were thinking like, I want to build a brand, like, and you might just be saying, what if, like when sitting down to name a channel, you might say, what if this was something bigger one day? Like when my friend Benji and I um, started Video Influencers, which is kind of like, sideline back burner project, but grew to 700,000 subs or whatever. And we, you know, wrote YouTube secrets together before we even posted a video. I think we bought videoinfluencers.net eventually for like 12 bucks. I think we got videoinfluencers.com gifted to us pretty wild. Cause we like started the brand. And then someone I knew was like, I have that URL. Do you want it? So we got video influencers. Uh, and so we didn't get .com up first, but we did the research and we got the Instagram and we got the Twitter now X and we got the Facebook page. So we also were thinking about brand and not just a YouTube channel name. So we actually go um, into this in a very heavy way inside of our niche finder course. One of the best things you could do this month is go through our niche finder course. If you want to get clear on your topic, maybe you're going to pivot or reposition your channel. A lot of our, our VRA students, you maybe already have that in your members area, uh, but it's also part of our um, bundle as well. So I hope those tips added value. And that's one of the reasons why you don't want to sleep on our holiday offer because uh, there's, I've maybe covered half of the strategic questions, not even of just kind of like brand niche, where's this going, positioning, big picture. So thinkmediasale.com, skip the appetizers, pick up the cyber week sale, thinkmediasale.com. All right, we got a super chat. I'm going to come back to you, AO Hammer, in a bit. Some great questions coming in, but we got to get to Jason. Jason, welcome to the show. Tell us Thank a little you, bit Sean. about your channel. Yes, uh, our channel. So a friend of mine uh, and I were discussing about a year ago, hey, we've got friends that are getting separated, divorced. How can we help our buddies in their marriages and other men in their marriages and so we came up with this idea to help men thrive. And uh, so we started a YouTube channel and podcast. And so we've been at it for about a year and uh, we're learning lots and changing things as we go. Uh, but we're, we got 138 subscribers. It's like, okay, we, how do we break out? I think that's friends and family and a few people. Let's, how can we break out of that? It's amazing. So first of all, thanks so much for coming on and being a part of our community. And then secondly, love the vision. Marriage is tough. We've been married 18 years. We're in counseling right now. Uh, we've been in different seasons in counseling. We're hitting a whole new season uh, as a side quest. Um, we also just realized, Sonia and I, that they say, what are the top stressors that hit a family? They say, moving is one of them or remodeling we're doing that up in the northwest and trying to juggle living in two states with kids and families and we're kind of moving more washington because of family but that's happening um one-year-old and three-year-old kids and kids at certain ages okay that's happening um health challenges my wife especially has got we both kind of have some stuff but she's got 
She's been in the ER in the last couple of weeks. That's a whole nother level. You add chronic illness or health challenges. That's happening. Um, and then you add trying to run a business together, um, co-own a business. And so we also realized amongst mainly my weaknesses and failures and foibles that I'm trying to grow in that the circumstance and season that we're in. So anyways, I can feel the need of what you're talking about to strengthen marriages, to impact. And so just thank you for the work you're doing. And um, so we, we, of course, want to help purpose-driven leaders like yourself. And so great job. This is needed. So let's blow it up. Awesome. Thank you. So um, why does this say how to buy a business? I mean, why, why the, did, that is oh, one you, of our, you're doing, you're covering multiple did. topics. It's not just uh marriage, family and business, helping family, men thrive and, in family business. and business. Thank you. Okay. And, and let me read the top then. Okay. So helping men thrive in family and business. So you also, your content would be like directed at me. If you're you in the target market. Juggling. Yeah. You would yeah. If, if you happen to be in business and in family together. Okay, great. Just helping me. I, it was a, there all along helping me connect the dots. Perfect. All right, well, let's look at some things. The first thing that stood out to me is there's too many words. It gets okay. worse as we go down, but there's too many words even right here. It's almost like, God, I got a couple opinions. Cover images are overrated, like how much impact they have. But I'm going to be honest. I don't think saying weekly shorts or saying monthly episodes even matters. I don't think frequency needs to be said. I don't think anyone, because here's what happens. No one reads it and holds you to it. Right. And a lot of people just fail on it anyways. Like myself, you're like weekly shorts and then you miss a week. So what happened? You think someone was like, oh, I can't believe they did it. Like they only, it's they see it if you post new content. They see it if the algorithm suggests it. They don't see it because like, oh, you know what I'm going to do? Hey, Siri, remind me that the lifeguard, you know what I like, so, so I'm just, what I'm asking here is what words can we remove? Sure. So, um, the lifeguard show, I might also say it's cool. The logo's there, but it's also here and it's also on the handle. I think helping men thrive in family and business theoretically could be the most stripped down. And then it makes it even more powerful because, when we, when we take away, it just accentuates the message, helping men thrive in family and business, which is a incredible, um, tagline mission side note. Do you have 36 kids? Just nine, Sean. Okay. You know what they say? Nine is a good start. Yeah. I, that's what they say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, and then, and then the, we help men. I'm not, a, I don't love it. You know, I, I almost like, it's all right, but I don't love it. It's cause it's different. Cause then it's a, we help men. I mean, it's clear, I suppose, but you know, I do say lifeguard show. I don't know why the G is lowercase right here. I'm, I'm nitpicking. This isn't even I, what I appreciate it. So we talked, we were like, okay, we're going to start a channel. Let's call it the lifeguard show. We're helping men guard their lives. And now, you know, it's perhaps, you know, you confuse, you lose. We're getting a little bit of that, the story brand thing. So we're trying to differentiate. It. I would from change the... it. I know it's painful. I'm going, I'm, I'm cutting right in and it's I'm going with my gut case. because I hate I, the worst thing in the world is having to change your, and not that you have to, mm. but if you think long-term, like my background working at a church a church changing their name. And I was the director of communication person and the social media manager. You want to talk about the person in the meeting that does not want the church to change their name. Like, do you understand the ramifications of us changing all the social media and all the YouTube and all the logos and all the work I've done and every old sermon and every old logo and every letterhead and everything that we've done. And are you kidding me? And the brand we've built the level of stress, let's not change the name. I get the angle of like not wanting to do it, but then what would your 10 to 20 year from now self say? Right. If you like, if you pulled the bandaid off and got your brand right, the, the reason I'm passionate about it, I don't think you have to, but lifeguards just mean something different. Right. So when we try to be creative and hope people understand the mental gymnastics we had, because, because what it meant, and I get, it, I get exactly what it means, but 
even in two seconds. Okay, so the lifeguard show, and and maybe that's what we're looking at in the whole thing. It's like we help man the lifeguard show, weekly shorts. There's kind of a lot happening, and you just want to cut straight through the noise. On on an, on an interesting thought, I mean, you could have your face. Are you guys equal on the podcast? Well, we I live in Canada. Maybe it's the Canadian show today. I think Alex said he's Canadian too. Are you partners? Well, we're friends. And so when we're together, we filmed some episode and now we filmed some interviews separately you have a on different occasions. You have a contract for what this is and what I'm going to be? No. What happens when the money comes in? You just think it's going to be 50 50 or? Great question. Yeah, that's what we think. Probably a good time to get some of that. A really good time to get some of that clear. Yeah. You, you both committed to this for the next 100 years? Yes. You define who does what by when and who carries responsibility. And to some degree, we define that in our conversations, not on the contract. Who who edits the videos? We hire an editor. Okay. So I didn't even think we'd take it here, but might be this could be one of the most valuable conversations of your life. Maybe this different. is yeah. Because um just thinking ahead, thinking through questions. If it's not written, it's not real. Mm -hmm. Getting clarity on paper, thinking about who does what by when, playing out scenarios, having some deep conversations. Um, because the other thing to think about is you've already invested time and energy in 68 videos. But you, if you're paying for an editor right now, you're probably paying. You guys are investing at without a profit. Is that accurate? That is accurate. So, so on our last couple of videos, actually, so I signed up for an Amazon affiliate link based on ideas from VRA when I started a couple months ago. I've only used it in our last like two shorts, which you can't even click on a link in a short. So it's, but it's like, okay, I've got it connected to my personal Amazon account. And I thought through some of the things you said there. Okay. So I don't even know how you get paid from an Amazon affiliate, but it's going to come to my account, I think. Mm -hmm. So does Ryan. By the way, I don't know that? any other way to do it. Like even in a business context, it's like a personal affiliate account. I don't know if you can do affiliate accounts on Amazon too. A bit like you can bookkeeping can track that, but I've been in a similar situation where. So it's a lot of things to think through. The other thing that's interesting is like, I think you guys have a business plan. No. So I think that the work you're doing, it would seem as you're just getting started and building your family um, almost at scratch, you know, with just a few more to go. Are you going to have more? Uh, well, there may be more on the way, perhaps. If right now? Works Already on the way? There's yeah, all number, kinds of number coming out here. We're having like awkward conversations about business partnerships. <laughs> You're announcing your wife's pregnant and you've told nobody else, just me, not even your family. It's on and the Christmas cards that we just watching sent live. Out. I mean, I, you'd actually say that, but you sort of implied it. And then I just shined a giant spotlight on it. And we're, just, we're going to all kinds of places on Coffee with Candle today. Let's go. <laughs> number 10 is on the way, Sean. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's a good number too. So, man, I just think, um, I think, and you're VRA elite. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I think that it would seem, just getting to know you right now, right, that you're experience what you both know your passion your mission is sound the business models you can build around what you're doing are also sound to make enough money for the mission even without a big audience and then over time the audience keeps growing and growing and growing mm -hmm. but actually maybe things not even blowing up or going crazy yet is one of the greatest blessings in disguise hmm. because thinking about who else would we maybe need to hire? It's kind of like one, one of my favorite books is Your Next Five Moves by Patrick Bet David. And one of my favorite parts of the book is in one of the last chapters where he actually lists his 15 moves hmm. of building valuetainment. And you start see, seeing a couple things, not just what to do next, but also sequencing. And this is also why nobody is copyable. Like somebody could say, I'm just going to copy what Sean did. I can kind of observe, you can actually can't even see what I'm doing. 
because you don't know my sequencing. You don't know that I do this or do that or I, how I hired this person and I did this thing and I made to have this conversation and we had to get this and right and we had to get the brand right for because somebody else too, they also could have their own sequencing, it may work, may not. And so it's sort of, I'm thinking, okay, you have a personal work to do, personal questions. Where do I want this to go? What's my dream scenario? How many hours a week do I want to do? What do I want to do now? We've been here, but where are we going in the future? You then got your partner's thoughts on that. You then got saying, how much more money do we need to risk and invest? How, what is it going to take to get velo like escape velocity? Um, do we need to sideline that? Do we want to build? And what I say about this, because you have a real coaching opportunity for men, courses and coaching or education for men and helping them in a, like I was thinking one of our students that's doing intermittent fasting mm. is doing 12,000 a month. Um, affiliates, brand deals, ad revenue, but about six or seven or 8k from coaching family and business. It's so needed. Mm -hmm. So, so if you also know, okay, we're basically going to, that's part of the sequence, but it's also just because it's one part, a lot of people mistake this. They think, okay, when I got to like sideline and build that now, not necessarily, you just might be like, okay, that's going to be probably in the six to 12 month window out, but here's what we need to get right. We need to jump on with Sean and talk about the channel, but before we also start doing the channel. So, okay, what's the brand look like? Is there a logo for the brand? Cause I was also thinking a logo and I, this whole conversation spun off just looking at the avatar thinking, should it be your face or should it be his face? Right. Could you put your both faces in there? The other question would be even talking about, is it actually more 5149? Um, just open-handed conversation because mm -hmm. personal opinion, I wouldn't do 50, 50 business other than with my wife. Right. And I'm grateful for everything I've done because, but just because I don't even, I really don't even know if it's possible. Right. 5149 clarifies a ton while giving essentially absolute equal benefit but it sort of shows who who's who's going to be there forever who's gonna and and then also like even exit clauses you want to know how how you could exit or how you could transition should something happen should whatever and i think sometimes we're afraid of all these conversations another good book is difficult conversations and crucial conversations you, maybe the conversation isn't even difficult when it starts, but it gets difficult. As you, and, and you play yeah. things out. What happens when the business is making a million dollars a year? Amen. Who gets to decide who you hire and who, 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 who you fire or how you risk that money or how much risk you take. That's why yeah. 5140, who's the final decision? You have to come to a consensus on every decision. <laughs> try to try being married to your business partner. Maybe you are as well. Uh, you know, like, is it consensus? So, um, what I was interesting is like looking at the channel, I almost is like, it would be so powerful if this was like a crest or a logo or, or a movement. The book eventually comes out. Who writes the book? Are you co-authoring it? I, and you obviously have seen, which this is also pretty remarkable. Benji Travis is still one of my best friends. We work out together. We co-authored YouTube Secrets. We own Video Influencers 50-50. Hmm. One of the benefits of doing that, and we own the book 50-50, one of the benefits of doing that that has helped it work is both, I think, of our grace and personalities and, and forgiveness and, and conceding at different times, but also that him and his wife have a main thing, their vlog, and then I got Think Media. And so we kind of have like a collab project, a little bit different, but I learned so many lessons too and and look back with nothing but gratitude. And I'm also stunned because uh, it's kind of rare. Like I think Dave Ramsey said, partnerships stink because they all sink or something. There's some quote like that or whatever it. And it's, and let me put on another side. There's, there's like probably no Apple without Steve Wozniak and Steve jobs. Another good book um, is how I built this, the book. Let's throw this into the, I don't know uh, if we're capturing these ones, Victoria, but I, I can't remember. Which ones did I already tell you, Jason? Next five uh, moves. Well, you said crucial conversations. Crucial you, conversations. That's one next in there. five moves. How I built this, the book. We'll throw those in the description. Those are our affiliate links. 
this is a wild book for you in particular. There is a whole and and it's actually he's got a great podcast, but Your next it's five like, moves. That was another one. Yeah, this is so synthesized, um, meaning rather than having to dig through. Sometimes people say like, oh, why should I buy YouTube secrets? I could just watch all the videos and eventually get all the points. You're like, yeah, but you that you want to know what's more efficient? The synthesized book. It'll actually save you time to listen to the four-hour audiobook rather than listening through 40 to 80 hours of YouTube videos with all the other. And so this book is so dense with business wisdom, but there's a whole chapter. I wish I could get to the... Uh, uh, e-copy nah yeah like the the like just the in, look inside so let me see here how i built this anyways and they have a whole chapter on why if you're going to build something great partnership is great hmm. I, i'm not even trying to so there's all different opinions about partnerships perhaps for what it's worth and it's all a grain of salt but 5149 is just that's still, it's so close to 50, 50, but it clarifies so much. Yeah. And it would clarify that like, listen, I'm going to carry this thing to the end, no matter what, I'd love to go the whole way. It's going to be easier for you to have exit ramp. Do you see it going that far? Do you want it to go that far? Do you want to write a book? Do you want to coach? Do you want to work 40 hours a week? Do you want to work 20 hours a week? How often do you want to do that? Do you want to do that for the next 10 years? Do you want to do that just for a season? Do you want to keep this as a hobby? If you were given this scenario, and by the way, a very gracious and open-handed perspective is also, you start, if you guys could sit in front of a whiteboard and follow, you know, for the sake of time, we could kind of land the plane. I've, I've asked maybe 5% of the questions you should ask. Just open. Well, and, so and we've talked about ask. lots of stuff, big picture. Hey, conferences, couples, cruises, blah, 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 like. We got locked. We all over the place. It's like, okay, well, what are the sequences? That's a takeaway out of this. What on paper does this mean? Am I paying for the cruise? And then if it flops, you know, I'm the Am guy selling my house. You know, yeah. Who who takes out a HELOC when we have to? Like, do you do it too? And I do it too. How much yeah. equity do you have in your house? Like, yeah, yeah. You don't have to get in all these, but like, it. There's a lot of different things that could come up. Um, and uh, that wisdom from video influencers was. It was hyper lean. So that was one thing where there was a, there was like a risk threshold. I had an amazing editor named Gabby, still collaborating with Benji and doing some other stuff. And, and, uh, but like in Mexico, so the editor was lean, like ad revenue could cover some things. This could cover some things, but we didn't run a conference together. We like, if I was going to take on the risk of a conference, I wanted to, I wanted to take it on myself, you know, like whatever. So, so the possibility of multiple entities, the clarity of, okay, this is kind of a collab channel. This could do this, but like, I want to build the coaching thing and this, and I didn't really want to do that as well. It's a lot of different directions you could go. So, so, um, this is fun. I didn't think we were going to go here. This um, is a business coaching, uh, <laughs> for here. Except that we don't really have a business yet because we haven't got one plum nickel out of this thing. We've just dumped our nickels in. So, <laughs> did, did you uh, create an entity? No. Um, and I, I, either did I for quite a while. Like it, we actually got pretty far at Think Media. We actually started video influencers right up front because that's more how Benji would lean. We had an mm -hmm. LLC before I think we posted a first video. Think Media. I was a sole proprietor, and we had like. 10 contractors working here already or something like that. No employees yet. Cause there, you can still, I think run it lean. I think in a way LLCs could be overrated, but as I go in wisdom, liability is smart. Taxes mm -hmm. is smart. Bookkeeping is smart. Um, and okay. So let's keep it. Any final question on the business and then I'll give you a few YouTube tips. <laughs> well, we got a lot to think about and he, he's a CEO of a company. And so he's, got some business, you know, from their family business he's been in. And as I've been in a family business too, so we can go a lot with the business stuff, but yeah, branding, uh, name logo. You can see, if you look at our older videos, literally red with a white cross on it, like really jumping into the lifeguards thing. And as people were like, you know, no, no, get away from the lifeguards thing. We pivoted and got rid of the cross and made it blue. 
but maybe there's another step too. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, you're in VRA elite, I think connecting with Brooke uh, and Brian, both higher level branding geniuses mm -hmm. and, and positioning, because what I also, you know, what's interesting is like we, for example, I don't have a copy of YouTube secrets, but we, we architected the entire channel. Um, before we ever posted a video, we knew we were doing this. Mm. And we worked backwards with growing our email list and whatnot. And now 110,000 copies sold. The whole thing was intentional. So the right book on marriage and business with the right title, with the right information, with the right email list built to it, with the sequencing. By the way, that was an entire, se it was a sequence. Sure. And I... We, it all started when Benji picks me up from the airport. He would hire me to film video, um, to do videography for them. Um, I had a whole income stream from doing freelance video. I was his wedding videographer. I had been helping pastors and leaders build their YouTube channels. He had, um, all kinds of YouTube connections on like the YouTube celebrity entertainment side and him and his wife had a vlog. He had had a real estate channel and had this whole ranking videos locally in the Pacific Northwest experience. I had ranked videos in tech already. And not even close to what we had done today, but by 2015, we are like, wow, we know quite, we know a lot about YouTube. We have a lot of YouTube experience and there's no definitive book on YouTube. There's a bunch of eBooks and like lower quality stuff. Um, what if we were a really great one? Um, we would have had a, quite a bit of good things to say at that moment, but we um, didn't, um, uh, uh, we, it got even better based on what happened next. But this would show the principle there would be the power of like starting before you're ready or the power of like committing and then, and doing something, but then being willing to pivot along the way because we're driving in the car and I had just gotten off a Southwest flight, listening to Lewis Howes on the school of greatness podcast. And you interviewed Tucker Max and Tucker Max launched a company called book in a box. And then eventually it was called scribe and scribe just went bankrupt and now they're back. And so what a journey it's been, but scribe has been amazing. So they're kind of like a ghost writer that you're actually the writer after hours and hours and hours of interviews, but they synthesize it. And why? Because are we both going to just go to Google Docs and, and type? And we're not even necessarily going to be great. One of the reasons why YouTube Secrets is a really, really great book is it's really, really well written and easy to read. Why? Because a really good writer wrote it. Not their information, our information and our stories and our... so. When I heard about that, I was like, what would you think if we did this? And we went 50-50 on the cost of booking a box, 11,000 at the time, 1,000 off because of Lewis Howe's link. Now it's 40,000. We got a good discount. Locked it in. But then because of good mentors and investing in programs like VRA Elite, one of my mentors, Shalene Johnson, I remembered her saying, she said, it, she is a New York Times bestseller. If I'm going to launch a book, I want to have an email list first. Period, end of story. That's the thing I want, which I would also say if you're going to launch coaching, you could do it other ways, but you got to be building your email list. So then I realized, okay, yes, YouTube channel, but email list needs to be the thing. And so then we set a goal. We are not going to release the book until we have 25,000 people on our email list, sequencing. So then we said, okay, maybe I can make some think videos. Maybe he can shout it out on his vlog. Then we thought everything that you're learning in VRA Elite and the power of being connected to thinking about this stuff, we thought, okay. What if, um, uh, do, have we built though, it, not just an email list, but even subscribers and an audience that would actually want to build this book, exactly what you're doing now because it's family and business. We're like, we need to start a new YouTube channel. It wasn't even the first thought we were like, write best selling book based because we love YouTube and we've got seven years of experience each already by 2015. Okay, but if we do it right, as we, we committed, we paid the money, put money half down on Scribe, paid the money, but then we're like, okay, so slow down a little bit. Now we got to build, let's actually like start a new YouTube channel. So we shot a video that holiday season while I was back. You can see the original trailer, shot the video, and then started committing to interviewing uh, video influencers, not just because it's smart, but also because imagine, would the book be better if we talked to 100 experts, entrepreneurs, or worse, if we hadn't taught, you know, it would be better because it's not just our wisdom, it's other people's wisdom. Mm -hmm. And then in the process, 
we got better. I'm building Think. We're building video influencers. We're learning a lot. It actually delayed the book by four years. But I would argue four years of blood, sweat, and tears went into the book. That's probably why 110,000 copies have been yeah. sold. Ryan Holiday, Perennial Seller, another book to read if you want to write a book. So uh, ultimately, yes. uh, we ended up with like 100,000 people on the email list. Video Influencers was much more successful than we thought it would be. Momentum happened, but was also, and here's what's interesting. I will say we could have done a lot better in our business plan, but there was one objective of this whole project, YouTube secrets. That So we can look back. This was the objective. Now it's kind of cool that we just did the second edition, which doesn't show up on the paperback, although it is the second edition. So it's the updated second edition. So we, we just got together. We re-recorded the audio book. Things have been cool. It's, it's living on, but it was the one objective. And, but also as we saw things expand now, actually Benji's got some of his own coaching. I think is now my focus. We have our own event. There's also been some good. And that is powerful because even though we had to have some conversations as things evolved, mm -hmm. it, the, the sequencing was build channel, build email list, launch book, both benefit from book, serve a lot of people. And that's what we did. And here we are. And and of course, it's like a mixture of hard work, hustle, luck, timing, faith, God's grace, all of the above. And it's all by God's grace. Yes. And it's all very intentional. Mm -hmm. We're not talking and I don't, I didn't sell 110,000 books by accident, yeah. sequencing, like planned out the whole thing. So I think that you, th it's, it's, now we we've got VRA elite and we got coaches. And so I also started realizing, okay, the reason I, uh, I couldn't have gone to what, what we're doing now in, in a 50, 50 situation. Um, I could have, I suppose, but I just mean like, as I started to see, cause you also start, our vision was the book, but was the vision five years with grow video live and this amount of hustle. And what is your lifestyle and five daughters? And what is my lifestyle? And where's your lifestyle over the next five to 10 years? So what's so cool, again, still best friends, project successful. Recently, we're just sharing a meal together and talking about, man, how crazy to just look back that we sat down and we made a plan and we did the plan and we got here. It wasn't exactly how we thought and like, look over now and you're doing this and I'm doing this. But then there was also so, by the way, so much more we could not see. I can see it now having been through the process. I'm really grateful because I think for our entire community, because for the percentage of us, there's probably a hundred ideas that you never would have thought of. Maybe you thought about starting a channel with somebody else. How's it divided? What's happening? And so it's a pretty deep convo, but, um, there was, I shared that rather long story to talk about kind of sequencing intentionality, sitting down and then thinking about starting with the end in mind of, I think the book is a good model for you because, I, and really what the model would be is, book framework proprietary process potentially one day event multi-day event online course and coaching but it's all the same thing mm -hmm. like that would be kind of the expert model or the info preneur model that somebody could get in with you at a free level and a book level and an ebook level and they could and you and you don't build all of that overnight and you don't have to necessarily do all of those pieces but that would be thinking about where this could all go and then in doing so you know, who does what by when, what do they carry, et cetera. Okay. So any qu follow up questions on that? Yeah, lots, but that's good enough for now, I guess. I don't know. You know, you, so you had your own thing going, you and the other guy partnered and continued having your own things going on the side. And then you expanded your thing. It's that, it just sounds like, hopefully I can be where you are in 10 years. Cause it sounds like our paths are on a similar thing, but you defined things and you split off and grew your own thing while growing a thing together also. Yeah. And, and also even through different challenges and whatnot, I think it's trying to get as clear and it's simple on paper of like, what are we solving for? Like, so how, how could we define winning level one book is out book is successful book is selling by the way, also like, if you will, passive income. Yes, mm -hmm. we still market it. Um, and still work on it. I, I don't want to say that it's passive and other people help do that. 
-hmm. but in the sense that it's done. The cool thing about building your own products, what we all should be thinking that or listening to Coffee with Cannell is how do I create something once that can pay me without having to recreate it over and over again, which would be different than actual interactive coaching. Mm -hmm. A book is one of the best ways to do that. Mm -hmm. I think every I think every content creator should write a book. It, it'll make you a better content creator. It forces you to synthesize your ideas. If you write a book that has a framework, there's a million things we could say. As a side note, in your particular situation with absolutely no sales intent other than your situation is very unique, it could be interesting. And I know you're already investing in VRA, Elite and other things, just throwing it out there. And maybe it's not now, but maybe it's in three months or six months. There's something to consider that it, it might be valuable for you and I to talk in an official sense uh, and I do, you know, like my coaching, coaching yeah. um, and, or, or the three of us, um, just because also you start thinking about, you know, I mean, my coaching is 4,000 an hour. Um, somebody's doing a half day with me for 12 grand. And so, and that's not, a, I mean, somebody like, sounds like you're, I'm not like, no, just putting, just I, get so it, I get it. I get it. I yeah, we've both but, been involved but, in but coaching. Also think, yeah. If you're building a multi six figure business or a million dollar business, that is, it's nothing. Compared to heartache and pain and confusion, and by the way, lawsuits and and inefficiency and employees that maybe you hired, but it was confusing and so it was a waste because it was it was kind of toxic. There's just a lot of things that could happen. I'm not saying that any of that happened, no lawsuits or anything, but it, but it absolutely could happen. So it could actually getting wisdom. The Bible says, right, buy wisdom in the message paraphrase. Uh, don't cost you everything you have more valuable than rubies, more precious than gold, depending on what you want to build, investing in someone to help you process through, see down the road, think about things and, and getting it set up right. And man, it pays so much. That's why I, I also I, I'm paying somebody right now forty eight thousand dollars a year. And that's the grandfather rate from his seventy five thousand dollar fee. Uh, it's a bargain. That is a sale might sound crazy, but it's a sale for the problems I have. You know, it's a sale for the economics that we're at. So just the different levels. Yeah. Okay. So can we hit a few uh, YouTube tips as we land the plane? Let me know anybody that's uh, got some unlocks from this. I know some people are probably like, okay, let's talk YouTube thumbnail strategies and whatnot, but this is some of the meat on the bones. And that list of books for your particular situation Man, how I built this is going to be amazing. I listened to the audiobook, but, but but I think the thing I was getting after is there's like a um there's like a partnership chapter mm -hmm. and it was fascinating. To actually I hope you don't think I'm the conclusion actually was not even anti what you guys could build together. What he would teach is that nothing great was built without a partner on your own. Yeah. But it doesn't mean yeah, and it, and teamwork for sure is necessary to make the dream work. But but the idea of 50 50, I think is interesting. And, and, and I mean, I don't know, there's all kinds of different views on leadership, but end of the day, so there's gotta be someone that has that final decision power. There's a, there's a reason why certain founders and CEOs, even when they get boards and stuff, take like four of the seven seats, because there's just something about things inevitably will get complex or something at one point. And, and you, if you have it prepared there, Let's play out the other way. I've seen so many YouTube collab channels fail, stop, um, hit a wall, hit a, and and I would argue they didn't have to, but they maybe just didn't go into it with. Okay, so I think we made that point. All right, rapid fire tips on some thoughts. Um, while maybe everything we just talked about encourages you to pause for a bit, great. Um, I, uh. Am still wanting less words. Yeah, not just up here, but on every thumbnail. Yeah. Well, you'll see the trend is as you go up, less words. Okay, good. You're so that's that evolution. Based on my review from VRA a month ago, okay, it was like, now I'm trying to get to no words on yesterday's or this week's post. Um, and then I mean, a, maybe one other thought is I think just staying in VRA and staying in VRA elite because packaging, but even your choice of topics, like so, how to buy a business. Um, is such a bad title in 2024. And here's why. Because it's it's too short. It's too vague. Somebody might argue, like, no, it's pretty clear how to buy a business. Yeah, but like, for who? With what size of budget? With what situation? With venture? With bootstrap? With, 
And so the essence of VRA would even just be how to buy a business in GTA five. It's an inc incredibly different. That's a virtual <laughs> business in a video game. It's different uh, without money, with seller financing. I'm already, I am a thousand times more excited if you, if that video is how to buy a business with seller financing, because I don't, I need like two or three more distinctions on that. And I would be thinking about that topic wise. You know, are you a helicopter parent? I don't like that. I don't like family worship ideas. I like family worship ideas. Three words. I don't even know what we're talking. And I don't know, like nobody was like, okay, you know what? Um, I'm just wondering, like, what are, is there any family worship ideas? I mean, parent, maybe there is. JW, Jehovah's Witness worship ideas, creative family worship ideas. How do families worship? Best practice family worship. So, but anyways, what we're after is topics. I would argue this. As you master VRA Elite and VRA, like you'll, you'll continue to get those, but that's what I would be after if I was um, you. I think it's interesting. You know, one of Valuetainment's uh, guys is I would I would really study VRA masters, you know, the, the deeper section of VRA. Yep. And look at trend surfing and influence surfing. I think Tom Ellsworth, that's on the value tenement team. So he's the biz doctor. And one of the cool things about that positioning is his shows are all trend and influence surfing. So he could, what he's, he's, he's diagnosing and breaking down the recent open AI case study about the CEO getting fired by the board of directors and blah, blah, blah. So he's taught, so in his thumbnail, the we work. So this is influence greater than his own, right? So I just think it's interesting to me. Uh, there's many ideas I could have, but that was the one I wanted to share with you that hit me. Like simplify, you know, topics in general, but you got to attach your influence when you're growth hacking the brand early on. I think the two of you interviewing virtual interviews, I think also the idea that like you start getting into things where it looks like you guys fly together. You live in a different place, but you fly to the same place to record. We have done that, yes. And I now mean, StreamYard, I've been playing around with. I think that's our next step while we're remote. StreamYard is about to drop 4K, but can you do solo rounds with um, with uh, Henry Cloud? Could you do a solo round with Henry Cloud, who wrote Boundaries? Right. I mean, I mean, actually, could you? Like, you well, that's what we're like. Who do we want? We're like, we want Willie Robertson. So I email Phil and Willie Robertson, and I get form results. It's like, okay, well, now we know they want us to have. A million followers you know before that wasn't the number but it was like sequencing okay, them. we're gonna go remote and interview some of these guys and some of the things you think though too you also think could you pay for it right but like just curious and then but also when you make your dream 50 dream 100 list of people you want to interview but also do you have to interview them together whatever but i'm just saying it, it sometimes it's simpler because also you could benji and i would also trade off and the video yeah. like he would do one i would do so just different things but like communication over communication but to the point of trend surfing um and influence surfing i just wonder you know of course uh, you value integrity and you would think about how you would talk about you know other stuff but when information is public like let's say of a celebrity couple or a business couple or a business marriage so so you talk about what can we learn from jeff bezos and his divorce yeah i mean I'm sure a lot and with respect to all parties involved, but, and then by doing your, do your research side note, as I get to know you and know your brand, I might, I'm by the way, I, I probably am not. Now this is just me. I don't want to completely, I hope you don't feel like I don't feel like that. Your Look, I came here for you to help me. And I'm but like, to I would probably skip friend. the family worship ideas. I'm probably would, I would skip cultivating your character. I would skip the sexia couldn't stop this entrepreneur. Cause I'd be like, what entrepreneur? And I mean, it, but by the way, if I'm, if I like have dyslexia, I probably would click on that. Well, so Get that was kind of the result. ask, ask specific questions title. I'm like, okay, how can I ask specific questions? There's like dyslexia. I don't care about dyslexia, but there's a bunch of people that do. And is anyone talking to them? So yeah, hence yeah, all the dyslexia that's not bad. There. that makes sense. But I don't know, cure for dyslexia, entrepreneur, uh, like, and, and, and so that's, yeah. we could go more on topic, but here's my point. If, if I'm subscribed, like our other 138 people, and I'm, you know, just trying to make a choice, and it's mm -hmm. like seven lessons businessmen can learn from Jeff Bezos's divorce. Right. And Jeff Bezos is in the thumbnail. I'm like, 
<laughs> okay. Like I'm just I'm just I'm just saying you'd get my attention, and that's what yeah. I would stop the scroll, and. And so that's only one strategy, mm -hmm. but my thought is it's, if you look at what the biz doctor is doing again, so Tom Ellsworth is a genius in his own right, but if he's like, Hey, how to buy a business? I'm like, okay, well, I also don't want to buy a business right now, but if it's business lessons from, you know, I'm like, wow, this whole chat GPT and he's responding to things that are happening. Those things, as you growth hack this, the mastering of these strategies in the hardest season of all, which is the season you're in, getting the algorithm going, kind of getting discovered getting your brand. They don't know you yet. They don't know your guys' wisdom yet. What do they know? Trends, culture, influencers, maybe a particular topic. That is why we attach to Growth Hack our channels what is influential. In my case, cameras are actually influential. People know what a Canon R50 is and a Sony ZV-E10 is. So they go search for that and they did not know Sean yet. Then they met Sean and a certain percentage were like, never want to listen to that guy again. Great. You know, definitely. I heard you in the comments, bro. Certain percentage hit the dislike button. Luckily, it's like less than 5%. But, you know, you get it. And then some people were like, oh, like this is kind of valuable. You know, click subscribe. And then I just did that for 10 years. And, you know, and built it up. But it's the kind of a growth hacker mindset. And I would, for the one strategy, I'd definitely be thinking about trend surfing and influence surfing as it pertains to family and business, mm -hmm. divorce. So I've kind of been thinking about that in the book world. So I just put up two shorts, like books for men, Wild at Heart, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Those are the two books I just put up. It's like, okay, can I piggyback on some of that somehow? I don't know. I'm putting them out there. You and can. And 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 last tip, we've gone super long, but last tip is secret to get interviews. Now, you still got to get some influence going mm -hmm. uh, because – people, they, they are selective, uh -huh. but I mean, it's also, it's kind of like a list, B list and C list. You think about that uh -huh. at C at a C or maybe even a B level, it doesn't matter the audience size. Maybe they just want the content. Maybe they can repurpose it. And you start reaching out that way. Hey, listen, we record in StreamYard and it's 4k. We give you the raw file so you can edit it. And like you, 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 you're pitching a different value. Uh -huh. Like, Hey, we're getting started. I would love to. And you also might say, I remember early on in video influencers, I think I paid the money out of my own pocket. Maybe we paid it out of our company budget or whatever, which was very small. It was like a pool, Benji and I. Lewis House, School of Greatness, seven, eight years ago. He's also kind of just starting. Said, hey, Lewis, can I interview you? I'll buy the mid-level of your book that you're launching. Meaning the mid-level when they bundle them. 50 books or something. So it was kind of a stretch for us. It might've been like a grand, 1500. But I was like, okay, we'd have less influence. We could then use these books to do a giveaway. What does it do? And and not it, it, so just growth hacking your way up. Um, and then someone says, okay, cool, that was good, you know, and chop it up and clips. So, anyways, great idea. But when that's someone great. is launching a book, that's when they're on their PR tour. Mm -hmm. And if if you just pitch them a 30-minute thing and hey, I'm gonna give 10 copies of your book away to our audience, and we're gonna select them in the comments. And so they know they're going to do, they know they're going to sell 10 books, whether or not your episode gets views and they feel the honor and the, and you may, you don't say an hour, you don't say, and if so, if I could have five hours of your time for a deep dive conversation, you know what I mean? Like you might say, you know, could you do a 25 minute? So like just hacking your way up, realizing Henry Cloud just wrote the business and marriage thing. You guys get to interview him, like uh, whoever, and you have other people that you want. And then a willingness to follow up consistently and a dream 50 to 100 list, meaning 100 different names. You reach out to all of them with the size of your channel right now. Five say yes. It's like guaranteed eventually. Like if you are just kind of consistent in communication because they're all kind of. And again, you're not going to get, you know, Dr. Phil uh, yet. Um, but but you certainly could get somebody that they might share at their community tab one at a time. Hand to hand social media combat. We call it like guerrilla marketing and social media. Yeah. One to one, one view at a time, one subscriber at a time. Um, and so if you interview somebody and uh, not to classify, but I think we can all respectfully understand that there's like a list, B list and C list influence. 
So see this person's like, sure, I'd love it. Oh, you're gonna buy 10 books. Great. You're like, awesome. You made a great interview. And they're like, I'll share it, you know, on my community tab as well. They have their own YouTube channel. They share it on social and it leads to like seven people or like your podcast is so cool. That's how you build a community one person at a time. I think I heard uh, an expert recently tell me too. He said, all I'm trying to do is reach two people a day. Mm-hmm. And he talked about the law of like multiplication. Oh, he was like, I was trying to reach two people a day that would tell two people. Right. Exponential growth. And he was like, do you know where I'll be in a couple of years? I don't know. I, I don't even know what calculator that would be called. But he was like, I'd have 250,000 listeners in like 36 months. And I was like, huh. If you reach two people a day, that would tell two people because of the excellence of your content, the value that it gives, the clarity, knowing your audience. If two business owners that have a family discovered you a day and they told two other friends that, hey, man, you know how like we never found anybody that has like a podcast just for business and family? This thing's really good. You should check it out. Check out this interview that he just did with, you know, this author. It's a pretty good episode. And and that's 250,000 in 24 months or whatever the math is. And so if it's less than that and it's only 50,000, you know how what a viable business and then mission and impact that would be? Meaning even if it wasn't two people a day, like it was more like one and a half or only a half or, you know, so... Okay, we've we've yes. said a lot, Jason. Do you, you thank you like, so much? Feel like it was worth your time jumping on today? It was worth my time, Sean. I appreciate it. And I love VRA, the coaching, the courses, the accountability. So a plug for VRA Elite. You know, if anyone is thinking about getting in there, our despite our channel still being small, we have made a lot of changes and implemented things because of the VRA stuff. So thank you so much. Jason, so grateful for you. Love what you're doing. And I think I hope that this was even a God conversation, you know, like just like a right thing, right time, getting ready for 2024, really believing in what you're doing. And so, uh, keep building. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Take care. Okay. Friends, we got some Q and a, I didn't know we were going to go that long telling whole stories and narratives. I hope there was some lessons. I do want to ask you for the 98 of us that are hanging out. Would you consider hitting the like button? Secondly, would you consider taking a time to share an aha moment and unlock today. We like to get ahas and unlocks. I got a super chat that I'm going to shout out. Thank you for your patience. Um, But what was an aha moment? What did you like best? What do you need to do next? What's one of your commitments for December? What are you planning on 2024? What's your, what's a goal for 2024? I'd love to hear from you. Let's hit the super chat. Ayo hammer, the artist. I can never thank you enough for all the free knowledge you provide. Thanks a million, Sean. Can't say, got to go. Okay, so you're probably not even seeing this, but thank you for the $20 super chat. Really means the world. I hope these shows are helpful and maybe help you think a little bit different. Hope that you get value out of them. Uh, What are your YouTube goals for 2024? Uh, Yeah, would you consider hitting the like button? That's all I ask. I'm not going to charge you anything. Um, this was a this was a pretty deep episode. Definitely never had this convo before. We talked about some deeper business stuff. Um, refresh and whatnot. We've linked up in the description like five books. If you're if you're thinking about like really getting a business mindset, how I built this, next five moves, crucial conversations, the other ones, YouTube Secret Second Edition. Um, let's hit some of your questions. And before we do that. Let me know, have you taken advantage of the Think Media sale yet? Check out our Cyber Week sale that's happening. One of the, there's two smart things content creators should be doing in December. Number one's posting videos. Number two, leveling up and learning and preparing for 2024. Maybe you're out walking, walking the dog, hitting the gym, working off those holiday party calories, you know, whatever put in some earbuds, go through the YouTube starter kit, go through YouTube niche finder. This is five courses for $57. But by the way, this pricing is super limited. So if you want to pack uh, the complete package for growing a successful YouTube channel in 2024, it's available right now at thinkmediasale.com. Let me know, have you taken any of those programs? Have you had any learnings? Have you picked up the sale yet? Thinkmediasale.com. And uh, my aha moment, is planning on the business side while charging forward with posting. It's great, glad I was grateful. Personal MBA is a great book from what I've read so far. I've heard about that one, it's on my shelf back here. 
I've never read it. So it has not helped me very much, but I agree. My friend Tim recommended that one. So that's a good one. Guerrilla marketing. Yeah. I'm going to use that two contacts a day and ask them to share that with two others, man, the law of like what small and big numbers and multiplication. Some people sharing their goals hit hundred K on December, 2024. This is the coffee with candle think media podcast community. Hey, who could you share this with? Share this with two people. Um, I mean it, but like, uh, yeah. Do you know somebody that's thinking about starting a YouTube channel? Do you know somebody who's like, oh yeah, I know a friend who's thinking about starting a business or a side project or a partnership with somebody. Send them this link. Be like, hey, midway in this 90 minute you know, video is a conversation that you might find valuable because we, we want to spread knowledge that can just help people you know, reach their goals. All right, lightning round on some Q&A as we land the plane. What are your thoughts on, you already answered that one. Before you use a brand name, should it be trademarked, Robin? I don't know. I mean, number one, sometimes things can't be trademarked or they're difficult to trademark. Um, so you really got to, to, to talk to a trademark attorney ultimately. Number two, there's a huge spectrum here, a spectrum of like move fast, get busy, take action. And then a spectrum of like, you know, talk to a trademark attorney, set up a corporation. And, and number one, there's not necessarily the finances for that. But number two, people that go to this extreme never do anything until I get my business right, my my business card right, my website right, until I get my trademark right. You just never end up doing anything. But it does have to do with like the scope and scale of your vision. There's things like, like a book title can't be copywritten. Can a YouTube channel, you know, there's like a lot of think medias on YouTube. I mean, I don't care. I don't know. Maybe I should care. There's all, there's also other think medias in other States, but we do different things. So listen, did you know about the filter feature? If you type in think media, go to filters, you can look at when's the upload date. Is it under four minutes or over 20 minutes? All this different stuff, but you can also search by channel. So there's Think Media, there's Think Media Podcast, there's this Think Media, there's Creative Minds Think Media, there's this Think Media, there's this Think Media, there's this Think Media. Do you see how many Think Medias there are on YouTube? There's like 40 on this page. There's this Think Media, has got two subscribers. Holy Think Medias. Think Media Expert. Think, we, how long can we, Think Media 2? Uh... Think Media Plus, that's better than the, than our Think Media because this is the plus version. Um, think Media Don Isaac. <laughs> How long? Can, think Media, another Think Media Plus. Think Media Entertainment. Think Media Tamil. Wow. Uh, this also is just like a side quest that I haven't taken in a while. And it's just massively humorous to me. It's wild. And um, I mean, so anyways, I guess a couple of things. I am giving you no legal advice, Robin. Michael Think Media, who stole our logo. Great. I th I Think Media. Okay. So I'm not giving you another channel that stole our logo. Another channel that stole our picture. Um, there was there 700 Think Medias. Like how long can we Think Media News 360? Which by the way, that's like a different name. Really? These other ones aren't though. Think Media and Digital. <laughs> I'm so distracted because I'm just wondering, like, Think Media Africa with our logo. And they have 10,000 subscribers. What are we talking about? This is an entirely, okay, I just wondered if they stole our content. Channels do. We get the copyright strike. So, you know, um, that's cool. Uh, let's see. So how far? I, this is, this is going to be an endless scroll. There's maybe an endless number of Think Medias in the world. So what conclusion do we have? Well, I'm going to tell you this, Robin. I am personally not going after any of those people or like worried about that or like worried about tracking them down. I And the reason this is not legal advice is I'm not saying if somebody, if you named yourself compared to a different company or something else or somebody else's brand, maybe that would, you know, they would. I guess I'm just too focused and too confident in like, we're just going to build our thing and look at the numbers and like we can rank our own videos and people can do whatever they want. By the way, you know how many YouTube secrets books there are? And that's a little bit different because you can't, 
<laughs> Sorry, I got to get to these Q and A's, but I hope y'all are having as much fun as I'm having because this is just such a funny. Okay, there's YouTube secrets hacks for beginners. There's two in one is better than ours. YouTube secrets two books in one. There's YouTube insider secrets. There's YouTube secrets, literally the same name. There's YouTube secrets unveiled. There's YouTube secrets. There's YouTube growth hacks, similar kind of. There's uh, uh, YouTube marketing secrets. And so, and there's more than this. We screenshot them all the time. All kinds of weird little niche ones. But but here'd be my ethic on even that. Like the reason, it doesn't make me even insecure, nor do I worry about following up. And again, you can't copyright a book title, but I'm like, a 45 page ebook with a janky cover is not threatening a really well written, properly published book. And a YouTube channel with somebody who's not consistent, who just puts your name and has two subscribers, is not worth comparing to somebody who's putting in high effort, patience, and 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 really building their brand. I'm open to your opinions too. Let me know your thoughts on on all of the above. So I'm not even actually maybe giving you a final conclusion. I'm saying, what's your vision? I think maybe most people overthink it. I think a wise startup entrepreneur maybe really does think about a trademark. And are you going to build a software? What are you going to build? What brand are you going to build? How long are you committed to it? But my non-legal advice is I, I would think about it day one, but I think most content creators, it might not be the something that you need to think about day one. It's up to you. What would your advice be to someone trying to break into the YouTube philanthropy space? I don't know what that means. Um, But my advice, if I think I know what it means, is what value does the channel add? Nonprofits struggle because they don't create a value-based channel offering. Like, here's how I think nonprofits the way that nonprofits should approach YouTube is not just putting up a portfolio of their content and their donor video and a recap video of the recent thing they did and a story about somebody and a testimonial. If I have a nonprofit that I, wa that I want to grow, what I would do is I would probably start a video podcast that is targeted at my target donor demographic that might be unrelated to my nonprofit but it would be a value-based video, video podcast that grows an audience and the entire video podcast would be sponsored by the nonprofit and would be kind of, I would use the awareness of it. So like maybe what I would do is I would cre create like a Christian business leaders video podcast. And then I would add a ton of value and interview guests. And then I would say, hey, if you wanna make a difference and you wanna whatever, this is this nonprofit over here. Because I think the best way to market is with actual value, value to the end user and something that, and rather than just like, we need money at the end of the year and donors or whatever it is, like philanthropy, it's actually, there's a reason to watch your content all year long. So what content could you create that's not just, oh, you uploaded a new like mission video recap or something but like, oh, it's a weekly show that I listen to. So I'm constantly aware of this and my year end giving or whatever would go to you. Kind of a different approach. So I think that's an interesting thought. My algorithm seems to prefer shorts. How could I divert to long form besides thumbnail and title? Well, Nicholas, add on the next one and say, it isn't just thumbnail and title. It's gonna be topic thumbnail and title for your click-through rate, but it's gonna be average view duration and your audience retention curve for the video popping off. So how can you divert to more long form, better editing, better communication, better structure in the video, be brief, be bright, be fun, be done. Perfect video recipe that we teach inside of VRA. Um, don't like write off like, oh, my content, is, like long form isn't performing. That's going to be the secret of long form is going to be editing and all of that kind of stuff and, and good quality content. Watch time, friends. Sean, do you have any advice for new reaction channel? I would ask about analytics, but most of my info says not enough data. Can the channel utilize affiliate marketing? Um, The question to ask my friend is, what is the intent of the viewer? So if you reacted to a new commercial for 
and this is probably not what you do, but if you reacted to Sony's A6700 commercial, I've done this before. They they dropped the, I think the Canon M50 Mark II trailer from Canon in Australia. So I reacted to it. Well, I can do it. That is logical to have an affiliate link to that because it's about a product. If you're reacting to something that's entertainment based and you're like forcing or just like trying to do affiliate links, the reason the person's watching the video is not based on affiliate links. But if you reacted to a fashion video and then linked to a store that sells those hoodies and people, so you just have to think about like there actually being a connection and it being logical. You can't, it's intent. Why is the person watching it? Why is the person watching a product review? Perhaps because they want to make a purchase. Why is a person person watching a political uh, commentary on on what's happening in, in in the country and politics? They probably don't want to make a purchase. Now, in, inserted in those videos might be like, "Hey, support the channel, support the mission, join our Patreon." Um, so you might be able to insert a commercial, quote unquote, if you get a lot of views. But that's still only going to be awareness. You know, my friend JP Sears, who's a conservative comedian, uh, does really funny skits. And at the end of every one, he's like, here's the brand deal. And it actually has nothing to do with the skit. Like, but he got your attention to your point because that maybe the video was really funny and the reaction video was funny. So at the end, you could be like, hey, and so then do you even want to do affiliate marketing? Hey, but before you go, if you are looking for an awesome monthly subscription box for if, if you're looking for, if you, Hey, before you go, cybersecurity matters. Use the link in the description to get us, you know, a six months of Nord VPN and sign up as an affiliate. So in that case, it's just like make great content, get a lot of views. You don't even actually need to have a brand sponsorship. Give a shout out to a SAS that's universal enough. Cause if you're like broad entertainment and like, whether it's your phone, whether you're traveling in the holidays at the airport, whether um, you just want to log in to uh, watch Netflix, use the VPN feature to get all the different movies you don't get in America because using the VPN, you can get the Europe movies by like tricking Netflix. It's up to you if you want to promote that. Um, that could be an affiliate call to action at the end of your entertainment or whatever it is. And then Let's leave it there. We, so we, I hope that added a little value. And then finally, Robin, have you? do you have any intellectual property lawyers on? Regardless, what do you recommend if someone else trademark a business name you've been using uh, well before they trademarked it? I mean, again, Robin, I'm no legal advice, but you might look at like the history of the company. The, trademark too is interesting because Think Media, we looked at it like some are like an agency and we're not an agency. There's different states. Could you be the thing in a state? Could you be the thing in a country? There's also how complex it is. Think media is too like meaningless. It's like very short. And we've been down the road a couple of times. Um, but also we look at how big, how many subscribers, how old is it? How old is their thing? And so on and so forth. If somebody else gets the trademark, what does that trademark mean? Will they enforce the trademark? Intellectual property is another one. It's very hard to enforce. What are you going to do? Follow up with, you know, uh, by the way, people like spinning off bootleg versions of YouTube secrets in other countries and stuff. What am I going to do? You're like, I'm mad. Get on a plane. Like, which you might want to do that. But I think, so I am not trying to put any negative shade on the questions. I'm just trying to give you my honest answers and how I think about it. Like, I want to choose winnable battles and guard my energy and think about where I invest. All of the above is... Information is just so stealable and so spinoffable. And so, and then the thing is the people who steal the information, what would happen if you sue them? Do they have any money? Good questions to ask. Would it be worth following up on that? I don't know. Maybe it would be. So, so, okay. There's two extremes. One, ignore this have massive success and then really regret because you had like, you had so much success that you would have wished you got things in place. And then again, the other extreme is another way of saying what I said earlier, get so obsessed with this that you never go, you never get super focused and go create massive success. Kind of a more money, more problems. Sometimes we're maybe like, we're so we're, we're, 
we're trying to manage something that's not even a problem unless it actually blows up to a big enough level. Um, and once it blows up to a level, you have the problems. And so you could always you think this is you can have things like insurance, things like insurance. By the way, there's insurances for like theft of intellectual property. It's another way to approach it. So you maybe see these and you look at damages and the person. So it is, it was a pretty big and, and yeah, we've, we've done a lot of all the above and we continuously do it, but we're always weighing kind of like how much red tape, how much stuff we want to get in. What is it? Is it a battle worth fighting? And these are some great, the really good questions. Is it a battle worth fighting? Is it a rabbit worth chasing? And is, even if the battle was like worth fighting, is the battle even winnable? Cause why would you go into a battle that you can't win? Have you studied the case studies on what happened? Do you think you're going to do the same thing? Are you going to build up the intellectual property of Zig Ziglar or Jim Rohn? And you might be like, yeah, I'm almost there. Okay, cool. So like, so it's even thinking through some things. Um, and, and more than anything, I hope that that adds value to you. Um, and just gives you more questions to ask and some things. All right, let me hit this one other super chat. Is it better to end suddenly or say my video ending? It's probably better to end suddenly number one or number two and quickly and number three and boringly and not quickly would be the worst. So you could just end. It's great because it really could get watch time to the end. You also could end, you have up to 20 seconds to do an end card. So what you could do is, is sort of trend. We teach the transition. So you sort of like, as you're concluding your video, you immediately point to the next video. So you're like, you know, and listen, if you want to actually learn how to do that, click or tap the screen to watch another video. Smash like if you got value out of this video. My name's Sean Cannell, Rhymes with YouTube channel. I'll see you in the next one. So you could have about a seven second transition, maybe a six second, eight second transition. It's great. And suddenly keep it brief if you're going to do a transition. Um, definitely, I would say avoid. All right, guys. So thanks so much for checking out the video. You know, I'm grateful. And maybe we'll see each other again. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. But I hope you've enjoyed yourself. When I switch to this camera angle, it looks like the frame rate's off, but it's just because my ATEM like is overheating or something. So if I switch back over here, it's a little bit smoother. Um, anyways, you know, so I think that uh I hope those tips helped. My friends, it is eleven fifty-five AM Pacific Standard Time on December first, twenty twenty-three. If you're watching on the replay, hashtag replay fam. If you made it to the end, hashtag made it to the end. If you made it to the end on the replay, you're a legend and I'm sending you love and respect. Uh, I hope you're, I'll, I'll see you before the holidays, before Christmas and stuff. And we'll have some more copy with channels. So subscribe, hit like. This is not a good outro, by the way, right? This is a longer outro because we're in a two hour live stream and we're hanging out with the homies. Um, and so, but I do hope you're having a great December. Welcome to a new month. If you're just joining, I would encourage you to watch the first 10 minutes of this video. Cause it's about getting your mind, right? Your goals set, your focus fixed on maximizing December and January. It's a strategic time to go all in on YouTube. And if you're looking for something to do next, your, your, your next best move is to text your mom and say, I love you. You'll thank me later for that one. Equally and probably more important than that is to text your partner, your spouse and say, I love you. I'm thinking about you and you mean a lot to me. You thank me for that one. Uh, your next best move after number three is to go to thinkmediasale.com and get our cyber week sale and watch the whole thing in December. Let's make 2024 your best year. And I want you to join me for the YouTube roadmap workshop. This could be a four hour event. It's happening in January privately. Um, it's, it's a whole strategic annual planning YouTube strategy session. It's an online virtual event. You get a ticket included in this. You get five courses for $57. You know, later on tonight, this weekend, you could go to Red Robin. That's how much your, your bill is going to cost. And you're going by yourself. That's like a lot at Red Robin. I mean, how did you spend that much? Um, you know, you're going to go out. You'd be like, honey, let's, uh, let's just make something out of the cupboards. Why? Because I bought the Cyber, Cyber Week sale. Oh, cool. How much? $57. Well, that's great. We would have spent $100 on dinner. Like there's so many ways. It's just a no brainer, right? And uh, I'm not trying to just pitch something. I 
am shocked by like how much we've included five courses for $57. That's the point is it's a radical deal. Um, and it's not just some random information. This is deeply strategic PDF downloads, a ticket to next year's event, AI for YouTube starter kit, just the clarity of blueprint alone. I'm convinced that you will thank me later when you see how valuable this is. And all of that is available at thinkmediasale.com. Uh, my name is Sean Cannell, and it does rhyme with YouTube channel. Sending you love and respect, gratitude. Hope you have a great rest of the day, great weekend. We will talk soon on a future episode. And until then, keep crushing it, keep smashing it.